Canadian killer Luca Magnotta is now playing the trans card to receive easier prison time, and I think it's going to get even worse than what we already know. Magnotta, some of you may know him as the subject of the Netflix documentary Don't F With Cats, killed Chinese chemical engineering student Jun Lin back in 2012. Magnotta, however, now goes by the name Violet, and he is married to another prisoner, all this while housed in the medium security La Macaza prison in Quebec. Now, the shocking details of the lax treatment of yet another high-profile Canadian killer were made known through the amazing investigative reporting of Michelle Mandel of the Toronto Sun. Magnata, a male escort who claimed he was bisexual at the time of his crimes, killed Jun Lin, dismembered him, then filmed the murder and dismemberment, and then mailed the body parts to Canada's political parties and a couple of schools. Magnata is now in the same medium security prison as serial killer Paul Bernardo, whose transfer to the medium security prison also drew public outrage. This offender committed horrific crimes. I regret any pain and concern this has caused. It's the same food. It's the same type of cell. It's uh, the same bedding. Now, after trying a failed defense of schizophrenia to get a lighter sentence. Now Magnata is gaming the system in a way that's becoming more prevalent these days and a way that's becoming enabled by the federal government. Magnata says he's trans. According to Mandel's reporting in The Sun, in the partially redacted report by a team at the McGill University Sexual Identity Center and obtained by The Sun, Four doctors recommended offering space and support to explore around a proper gender identity exploration that would allow Violet to express and present her gender as she sees fit and for her to experience living within this gender identity. But what I found most bizarre in all of this is not that criminals are getting kid glove treatment here in Canada. I mean, this is Trudeau's world and hurting someone's feelings on the internet could land you life in prison, or you could be locked up on house arrest for pre-crimes of future hate with Trudeau's online harms bill, and yet vicious killers are moved to accommodate exploring their sexual identity, all the while shacked up with their husbands. What's shocking to me is researchers know Magnata is lying, but the researchers are playing along anyway for the sake of tolerance. Look at this, Mandel writes, the doctors found he doesn't meet the criteria for gender dysphoria, and instead his feelings were the result of fragile identity and need to periodically reinvent himself as a defense against internal homophobia and as a strategy to protect himself from other inmates. The doctors noted that Magnata uses pat phrases she repeats as if rehearsed to describe his gender identity. While he professed to wanting to be as feminine as possible and to sometimes wearing makeup in private, the researchers wrote that he presented as masculine during all three of their interviews in his hair, clothing, body language, and intonation. Now, this is directly from the McGill researchers' report. The narrative of being born in the wrong body may be a way for this patient to wipe the slate clean once again and reshaping herself to preserve the illusion of specialness and innocence. Did you get that? Herself. The doctors use herself to describe Luca Violet Magnata, though they know the killer is playing a game here. They play right along with it. The doctors do this over and over again in the report, even while in the same paragraph, acknowledging that Magnata is faking. Here's another example. There is no evidence or report of any lived incongruence between her sex designation and her gender identity, the doctors wrote. But they still talk about a treatment plan for the fake woman butcher of a chemical engineering student. Look at this. Ideally, she would work with someone she trusts sufficiently to be able to get in touch with her internalized homophobia, understand its roots, and how it's affected her identity development, and eventually undo it. 
She may then be able to find peace and even pride in living as an effeminate gay man, which seems more in keeping with her longitudinal history. And Magnata, for his part, is willing to play this game until he wins. You see, in October 2021, Magnata told his prison psychiatrist for the first time that he wanted to transition and required female hormones, the report said. He hopes to have his vaginoplasty in the later future. And Canadian taxpayers will pay for it all. And then what happens? Women's prison. And that's no exaggeration. Since an interim policy was introduced in 2017, male-born prisoners who identify as women can now be housed in women's prisons. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. Justin Trudeau's soft on crime policies end up coddling criminals while making Canadian cities much more dangerous for the law abiding. We've had enough. We hope you have too. Please sign our petition at fixourcities.com.